This is Ty Cats Today. This is Ty Cats Today for a Monday, September the 20th, Election Day edition. Last Monday of summer edition, yes, because fall is here on Wednesday. Um, but uh, thanks for joining us here on the Thai Cats Audio Network. It's your digital host, Louis B. Always appreciate uh, you checking us out. If it's the first time uh, you're checking us out, well, then thank you. If you're a loyal listener from day one, then thank you. Um, but you can always like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can always hit me up with your uh, feedback at uh, Louis B underscore TV or at Ty Cats on Twitter. Uh, we'll get to some of your Twitter responses because earlier today I wanted to know how you were feeling as the team sits at 3-3 three and three through their first six games. Of course, this game on Wednesday will mark the halfway point of the season for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. So uh, where do you, how do you feel? Where do you see the Tiger Cats going after this? So, so we'll get to some of your responses who hit me up on uh, Twitter. So thank you so much. Always do appreciate that. Uh, so we'll get to some of those. We'll also be joined by Dwayne Ford from the CFL on TSN. He was in the booth here at Tim Hortons Field for the Ticats win over the Calgary Stampeders on Friday. Huge win. Like I said, improving the Ticats record to 3-3 three and, three and uh, for the time being, first place in the East Division. All right, uh, some news to let you know about is the Ticats have announced a couple of signings. And uh, they have signed quarterback Jalen Morton and linebacker Corey Thompson. Uh, so Morton already with the team. He was uh, uh, at, out there at practice today. He most recently spent time with the NFL's Colts earlier this season after originally signing with the Green Bay Packers as an undrafted free agent back in April of 2020. He's native Arlington, Texas, who played 34 games and 23 starts at Prairie View A&M over five seasons. Meanwhile, Thompson appeared in 18 games with the Bills, Buffalo Bills, that is, over two seasons, registering 19 total tackles and one forced fumble. He's a native of Missouri City, Texas, and was signed as an undrafted free agent with the Bills after playing parts of six seasons at Louisiana State University. So a couple of signings to announce by the Ticats, and we started off our availability with Coach Orlando Steinauer just asking him uh, what he sees and what he's hoping to see out of the two most recent signings of the Ticats. So uh, Corey's uh, just on Zoom calls right now, Louie, so he wasn't out at practice. Uh, I know everybody's going to want to know if I saw Jalen throw the ball 100 yards. I did not, and I, nor did we ask him to. Um, I will say that uh, he threw a few balls out there in the wind, and the wind didn't have much to say about it. It kind of cut through there. Uh, but other than that, seems like a great kid and uh, just jumped right in, you know, and uh, helped out where he could. So, again, we practiced for just over an hour, so not, not a lot. But he's been in meetings, and Tommy's met with him a little bit, and obviously he's met the other quarterbacks. So that's what, that's what I have about uh, – uh, Jalen. And then uh, as far as uh, practice, yeah, I mean, in the limited practice, we, uh, we we were on and off and got got done what we needed to. Well, hopefully at this point we have the right we have the right men. Uh, and for the majority of the time, they are self starters. You know, part of our job as coaches uh, sometimes is motivation. Uh, I'm not feeling that right now. Maybe I will uh, on the flight, maybe at the hotel, maybe have to, uh, you know, maybe there'll be a little bit added motivation. But for right now, I think it was just important to get them out there, get some of the soreness out, move around, introduce the game plan, and then get them off their feet. We're going to start, David. Yeah. What did he show you on Friday night? Uh, just poise, uh, toughness. Um able to overcome some adversity. Uh, you know, there, it's a lot. There's, it's not just about the plays called in the, in the execution. Of course, that's how you win. But there's managing the huddle. There's, you know, big shots that you take when you're sore. There's getting them out of the huddle. There's, you know, understanding getting them in field goal range, not turning the ball over, understanding the situation. There's just so much go that goes into, you know, playing the toughest position on the football field that uh, I was impressed with. Uh, outside of just the tangible numbers at the end of the game of three incompletions and how the game was called and thought Tommy did an outstanding job, obviously, but I thought the players did a great job of executing some plays that uh, we hadn't run previously. 
uh, while the whole game plan wasn't or plays weren't all brand new, there were there were a few. So um, really impressed with, uh, you know, just our receivers on the outside being willing blockers and whatnot. So um, David did a good job of managing all of that. That is the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Orlando Steinauer. And you heard there on the question asked by uh, Dan Ralph of the Canadian Press, it will be David Watford making his second straight start for the Hamilton Tiger Cats and obviously didn't set the world on fire, completing 19 of 22 passing attempts for 149 yards. No touchdowns, but no interceptions, no fumbles. He was sacked twice, but a solid performance by the Tiger Cats. And I was going through the record books, and not really the record books, but going through the last uh, few years of game notes and I've yet to find a Ticats team in the last couple of years who has run the ball as much as they did on uh, on Friday night. They rushed the ball 30 times for 116 yards. Got the job done compared to just nine rushing attempts for 29 yards for Calgary. Calgary being held to 279 yards. The Ticats held for um, 265 yards. So a pretty close game. It was all about the defense. And uh, let's hear from uh, one of those standout performers. We named him our performer of the game on Tiger Cats post game. Here is Simone Lawrence as he spoke after practice today. Um, it's fun. It's super fun. Um, it's It's a lot of communication. We're talking better together. Um, we're seeing things faster, and it's just more of we're trusting each other and we know where we're going to be where we need to be. It's been electric, you know. Um, I think Cam and Javon, they're doing a great job, you know, um, coming on the field every day and producing and being very productive. They're easy to work with, you know. Our communication's great, especially, you know, we have to talk together in certain packages a lot, and we're doing a great job. Um, we're we're on a mission and we're trying to elevate every single week. So, you know, regardless if they're playing well or not, you know, we need to play better than we played last week. You know, we're we're competing against ourselves every week, trying to get better. Um, I think that they're they're all grown men too. You know, they get a paycheck, so they're gonna come out and whether they're in survival mode or not and play their hardest. Um, just my teammates, everybody's doing a great job with doing their job. Um, my coach, um, Coach Ross, really helps me out a lot on, you know, just my transition and reading through my keys and, you know, my break, uh, break into the ball and stuff. You know, we really emphasize that. You know, I think uh, my coaches just do a great job. That is Simone Lawrence as he spoke after practice today. Of course, the Ticats are getting set to take on the – Ottawa Red Blacks on Wednesday night, looking to go above 500 for the first time this season. They can do that with the win. Currently sitting at three and three. And I uh, posed the question to you out there in uh, Twitter land, wanted to know, you know, at three and three, how you're feeling about where the Thai Cats are at. And I uh, wanted to get some of your responses here. Thanks so much for everybody who uh, reached out to me. So I always appreciate that. Uh, knowing that you're out there listening, uh, always always great to see you and uh, read your comments. And we'll get to a couple of them here. Uh, at Oski Eddie says, considering all the injuries they have, I'm happy with where they're at. And I think uh, a lot of people would agree with that. I did get uh, a lot of... People talking about uh, the injuries like Tiger Sammy, at Tiger Sammy. Uh, they wrote, uh, honestly, for who we're missing and how we've played, I will gladly take it. A bunch of key divisional games coming up. If we can go 3-1 and one or 4-0 and oh over the next four, then we'll be laughing. At Ari Katz says it's very promising, hanging in despite all the injuries. Once the offensive weapons start returning, look out. Defense wins championships, and our defense is as good as anyone's in the league. Praying and hoping for an early Dane Evans return and looking forward to seeing Jake Burt. Great points there made by Ari. Uh, at Jake underscore Peck writes in. He says, I truly believe that win on Friday was the start of the team we all thought and know they can be. A healthy offense, and this team will be Rolling, and uh, we'll get one more here at WRM Safety 24 7. That's uh, WRM Safety Solutions Construction Incorporated, I think. Uh, they say, considering the number of his injuries, I am content 
with the record. As Dane Evans said, it's not how we start, but how we finish the season. That is the focus. Get starters healthy for a championship run at the right time. You know what? We got some time, so I'll throw in a couple more here. Uh, Manny Oliveira says, first in the East, 10-day break after Ottawa. Goes all caps here. Get some boys back soon. Have a new, new utility, excuse me, and Poppy. Five for five field goal kicker. Have handled adversity, and hopefully things are turning the corner. Oski wee wee. And uh, one more here from Daver at Tycat53. Missing QB 1 and 2. Missing wide receiver 1, 2, and 3. I could go on. It is quite an achievement to be hanging in there right now. And more than they're just hanging in. I mean, they are. But they're 3 and 3. They're 4 and 1 in their last... They're 3 and 1 in their last four games, excuse me. And uh, this team, like a couple of you said on Twitter, I uh, feel like they're turning a corner. All right, let's get some analysis on that game and look ahead to Wednesday. Is very pleased now to be joined by the CFL on TSN's Dwayne Ford, and he was in the booth that I'm currently sitting in right now at Tim Hortons Field for the call on Friday night. He'll be on the call on Wednesday as well. And uh, Dwayne, it wasn't really the most exciting game. It wasn't exactly a barn burner, but the Tie Cats did the job. They got the win. Yeah, Louie, I will emphasize that there are no style points in football, right? This is not a judged sport. So, so things worked out perfectly. But quite honestly, if, if you were going to judge the game plan that was put together and the execution of it, I think your, your scoring on that would be very high. I thought that the, the Tiger Cats, when you consider the lineup with which they're currently playing, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, I thought they did a really good job, um, you know, in terms of doing – the things that that they did to put not just David Watford, but I thought their entire offense in the best possible position to succeed. Obviously you, you gamble a little bit less, you simplify the game plan a little bit more, you know, you, you're less risky, you play high percentages. And, and I thought they, they did a really good job of that. You know, I think a lot of people got very caught up in the fact that this is their third string quarterback. But when you look at the lineup and you would recognize this being around the team as much as you are, you are, it goes, way beyond that you're talking about a team not just playing with its third string quarterback but a team that's playing with three first year starters on its offensive line another young starter who's playing a new position for the first time this year um four of five starting receivers are first year starters including three who are first year cflers and that leaves a second year guy jalen acklin as like the old experienced veteran of the group and then you're also playing with your backup running back so i mean to, to do what they did against what, in spite of their record, is still a very good Calgary team. And Bo Levi Mitchell, a quarterback who obviously doesn't lose a whole lot, um, you know, I think really speaks volumes for, as I said, the, the game plan put together and the execution of it. And obviously, defense and special teams stepping up to take a little bit of the heat off the offense as well. So far, I just in a couple of hours I've been here at the stadium, I've been trying to go back through the record books and, and see when was the last time the Ticats actually rushed the ball 30 times they didn't do it in 2019 um you know i still got a lot more work to do to find it but as a former yeah, i fullback, suspect it might take you back to, to troy davis or something like that. <laughs> so that's what i'm saying so as a former fullback i mean you gotta give tommy condell credit for recognizing what he had um and you know he's a guy who kind of sticks to his guns when it comes to his offense but he knew what he had in watford and the game plan was a lot different than we've seen from the tie cats yeah and you're running plays from the same playbook that jeremy Maya Masoli or, or Dane Evans are, are operating with, but obviously you're going to pick the parts of that playbook that with which David Watford is most comfortable. And, and as I said, which put him, give him the best opportunity to, to be successful. And, um, and I thought they did, they did a very good job of that. And, you know, it didn't hurt that the, the fullback got a little bit more involved. Nice to see Nikola Kalinic catch a, catch a couple of passes. I think he was actually the second leading tie cats receiver in the game. So I, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, of course you are. I'm, uh, defensively, you've seen a lot of games so far this season. You've been, you've, you know, you obviously the bird's eye view of uh, just about all of them. So what have you, what, that defensive performance by the Thai Cats, uh, they just seem to be getting better and better. They're healthy. They're consistent. I mean, I would not want to be an opposing offense facing this Thai Cats defense right now. Yeah. And it, it's kind of neat to see, and especially their defensive line that has gone through some, um, injuries and roster changes and stuff through the first part of the season. But you can see once they, they sort of have that starting four together and then a little bit of depth with guys like Eddie Wilson and Lee Autry getting into that rotation and Mason Bennett as well in his first year 
I think making a, making a nice impact there as well. But when you've got that combination of Jagera Davis, Dylan Wynn, Ted Laurent, Julian, Julian Hauser, uh, that, that's a real strong front four. That, that is a great starting point for your defense. And I think Javon Santos Knox has been kind of that, yeah. that partner in crime that Simone Lawrence has been looking for since Larry Dean left town and has been, uh, you know, the two of them obviously have been very good. You see Cameron Kelly making plays from his nickel linebacker spot. And the secondary obviously has been terrific. You know, um, we talk so much about Frankie Williams, the return guy, but he has developed into a terrific defensive back in the the Canadian Football League. I think Jamal Roll stepping up, um, replacing Delvin Bro. A lot of people wondered, okay, is what has been this position that we never have to worry about? Is this going to become a concern? And I think it has been anything but. Um, you know, Carriel Brooks coming back and and so on. Um, you're you're strong. 12 strong and you've got some depth there and and it's it's been fun to watch them and as i said with what they've gone through on offense this year um the the defense has been kind of the the perfect supporting complement as well as the special teams which came up with a couple of turnovers friday night yeah and i know jeff reinbold has been praising his special teams they're such a young group a lot of rookies on that special teams uh group but i know he's uh, i think he said that he hasn't had a more fun group of guys to, to get to work with so it's nice to see it translate on the field. Okay, so the Tigers are finishing up about four games in 18, 19 days. The bodies must be hurting. Like, they're, they're only practicing once. They're out there practicing right now. They're only practicing once ahead of Wednesday's game. Is there a sense, when you're a player, is there a sense that, okay, let, let's, get to, let's get to Wednesday, let's have a good result, and then 10 days to get your body right? Like, what's the mindset when you're in kind of the, the home stretch of uh, these tight games? Yeah, I, I think that a lot of the time as, as players, you kind of like it. You know, I mean, players will often will often half joke that we play the games for free, but you're paying us to practice. And so in a way, you like having fewer practice days and and more games. Obviously, there's a bit of a physical toll that goes along with that. And and maybe in some ways, quite honestly, having had some injuries that has forced them at times to have fresh legs in the lineup, whether they like it or not, it may have proven to be a, a good thing through this stretch. And, and so that helps a little bit. I think that there's, there's probably a psychological element to this with Ottawa, a team that's been struggling as, as the upcoming opponent. But I think part of the approach for Hamilton is to make sure that as they've really toughed it out through this stretch and quite honestly have probably gotten better over the course of this difficult stretch, that there's no letdown, that there's no looking at the, the record of their opposition coming up to this game and thinking, okay, we've made it through the stretch. You're not there yet. You're, you're playing another professional football team and you know that Ottawa's coming off a of bye week. They've had some time to work on some things and, and you're going to get their best. Certainly they're going to be a, a hungry team with something to prove and, and always tough at home as well. So you got to make sure that the concentration is there all the way through this. And as uh, Hitch told us on Tiger Cats post game, it doesn't hurt to have uh, game checks back to back like that uh, during the week as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You, you like to have those close together for sure. Uh, Dwayne, thank you so much for uh, your time today. I very much appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you back here at Tim Hortons Field. My pleasure, Louie. Anytime. My thanks to the CFL on TSN's Dwayne Ford for joining me this afternoon. A one time Tiger Cat, a Vanier Cup champion with the Western Mustangs. Something he has in common with my co-host on Tiger Cats pre, at the half, and post. And that's uh, Andy Fantuz, of course, Vanier Cup champions with the Western Mustangs. So always nice to catch up with uh, with Dwayne and providing some great analysis on the uh, Tiger Cats win on Friday and looking ahead to Wednesday. Uh, speaking of Andy Fantuz and I, uh, we will not be in the booth together for Wednesday's game uh, because Andy will be filling in for Luke Tasker on the call. So RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker will have the call Wednesday night at 7.30. But before that, I'll get you set for Tiger Cats pregame presented by Active Green and Ross. And very excited to be joined by former Tiger Cat Courtney Steven. He'll join me throughout the uh, pre, at the half, and post game. So very much looking forward to, to reconnecting with Courtney and having him be a part of the broadcast. Uh, speaking of the Tie Cats Audio Network, if you haven't already, a couple of brand new episodes of some of our favorite shows launched today. New episode of the CFL This Week with Bubba O'Neill. Great roundtable of guests as he's joined by uh, Andrew Patterson out in Winnipeg, James Sabolski out in Vancouver, and Donovan Bennett 
a great little uh, program there for you. If you haven't checked it out already, uh, some of the best CFL talk, I think, unbiased, but some of the best CFL talk, uh, I, I think, uh, in, in the league right now. Just uh, various voices from different networks and different cities and different teams. Uh, it's worth checking out. Great roundtable show that the CFL this week. And also check out a brand new episode of Speaking with the Enemy. Monday edition, yeah, because when it's a quick turnaround, you got to get that show in, and uh, I, I was happy to be joined by TSN 1200's AJ Jakubik, the play-by-play voice of the Red Blacks, to get his thoughts on the club and uh, where they're at heading into Wednesday's game. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, friendly reminder to go vote if you're listening to this and you haven't voted yet, and the polls are still open. I understand you may be listening to this uh, on Tuesday. Or later in the week, so that doesn't make much sense. But if you can and you haven't voted, go do it. It's important. You know, it's what makes us a great democracy is that we all have the right to vote. So go exercise your right to vote. Elections.ca for everything you need to know for that. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day. For the Cats Audio Network, I'm Louis B.